Hello and welcome to Real Life. We have some incredible stories of real life for you today. Alveda King is the niece of civil rights leader Martin Luther King. She is now the proud mother of six children, but at one time she took the lives of two of her children through abortion. I conceived my first child who was born in 1970 and during the early years of that first marriage. And I conceived that child, the child was born. I did not know, and the community did not know, that that particular doctor, the OBGYN, was closely affiliated with Planned Parenthood. He also accepted their agenda. He would birth the babies in the hospital, but unbeknownst to many people, he was doing those DNCs for mysterious female ailments in his office without telling people. I ended up being a victim of that procedure. I had a living baby, and I went to get a pregnancy test several months later after that baby was born, and the doctor decided, you don't need another baby, let's see. Instead of giving me a pregnancy test, he gave me a DNC, and that was my first abortion without even really understanding. After that first abortion, I began to be sad, depressed, and, uh, but I had been advised I'm sending you to a place called Planned Parenthood. Talk to them. Don't talk to your family about this. Don't talk to the church. And so here I am trying to get advice from Planned Parenthood on how to cope with how I was feeling after this procedure, which was an abortion. And um, it just, things began to spiral downwards. In 1973, a law passed, Roe versus Wade in 73. And uh, I was told, now Planned Parenthood can really help you now. And uh, you just go talk to them about any problems. I conceived another child. I went to Planned Parenthood. This time I knew I was pregnant. And I was looking for advice and they said, oh, it doesn't seem like you're ready for another baby. We've got a new procedure. It won't hurt as much as pulling a tooth. They lied to me. I took that procedure. I agreed to do that and it was another abortion. So I had one living child, two aborted children. My body suffered, my mind and my spirit, my heart. During the next several years, um, I contracted from the chemicals in the procedure, something called phlebitis, uh, and I just knew I, I was sick in my soul and my body was hurting. When I experienced my own abortions, my body was harmed, my spirit was wounded, my soul was confused, I was confused in my mind. It affected my first marriage because I was argumentative, did no longer enjoy intimacy, physical intimacy with my husband. Uh, my weight began to fluctuate. There were so many problems. Um, between the chemicals and the surgeries and all the procedures, uh, my circulatory system began to dysfunction. There were so many problems. And sometimes I would think about the babies. And I might wonder for a moment, was it a girl or was it a boy? And this went on for many, many years. I sometimes would just think about babies. And as I began to marry for the second time and have other children, I couldn't really even bond with those children. Mm -hmm. Because somewhere in my subconscious, I felt guilty about the ones who weren't there. So then, how could I be a good mother to the ones who were there? Miraculously, in the mid-1970s, I had been divorced by that time. And because uh, these procedures affected my whole being. And I became pregnant again. Daddy King, who had saved me from abortion in 1950, said to me, I said, Granddaddy, I'm pregnant. And I think I'm gonna go over to Planned Parenthood and get an abortion. It, it won't hurt as much as pulling a tooth. He said, baby, they're lying to you. That's not a lump of flesh. That's my great grandchild. The baby's daddy agreed with my grandfather and that child was born. So I was moving into a new place. Uh, I was, had been pro-choice, had been a client of Planned Parenthood, was not satisfied, was confused and hurt, but didn't know who to talk to. Blessedly, over the next few years, I began to talk to God. And as I talked to God, and I, I could hear my uncle's words again, uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. A woman has a right to choose what she does with her body, but the baby's not her body. Where is the lawyer for the baby? And in 1983, I was born again, received Christ as my Lord and Savior, confessed 
of all of my sins, including abortions, and I then became a voice for life. If I can tell this story and still smile today because my Savior lives, God forgives. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're a man or a woman who has experienced abortion, there is hope for you and there's definitely forgiveness and our children will greet us one day in heaven. I began the project of writing a book called King Rules a few years ago and many times when I travel all over the world, all over the country, people will ask one question, what was it like growing up in a family with Martin Luther King? And I would always remember that there were standards and principles. So I began to write a book, King Rules, and uh, there's a scripture, may the king's rule be refreshing. And I wasn't not thinking about the king family, Martin Luther King's family, but the king of kings, Jesus. And I wanted to record some of those memories and some of those standards for my children, my grandchildren, and all the children of the world. My uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., the brother of my daddy, Reverend A.D. King, and their father, Daddy King, Dr. Martin Luther King, Sr., were very pro-life and as uh, pro-life men. And I, you know, in, in the 20th century, there's so much argument over, let's be politically correct, pro-choice, pro-life. They stood for the sanctity of life. It was not politics for them. And so I believe if my uncle Martin Luther King Jr. were alive today, he would not have changed his position. He said injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And certainly he would regard that little baby in the womb as a human being. He would have based that on Jesus and John the Baptist meeting when they were both in the wombs of their mothers. And as a matter of fact, he would preach that sermon, you know. And so uh, Jesus wept and John the Baptist leapt. And so uh, he would support life, the sanctity of life. And if he were here today, he would encourage everybody to do that. So the purpose of healthcare is, should be to make someone live better, feel better, be more healthy. And so how can you heal somebody by killing somebody? We know that the issue of life is not a political issue. This is a moral issue. It's a spiritual issue. And God has instructed us to choose life. We cannot choose life if we abort our babies.
Rape is a horrible crime that affects its victims for their entire lifetime. Annie was understandably traumatized when she was raped. She was even more confused and shocked when she learned that she was pregnant. Here's Annie's story. Well, my family was struggling and um, during the time where my parents divorced, I um, was just leave, leading a very rebellious life and I moved out and uh, got my own place and started using drugs heavily and um, my house became kind of a party scene and my life became kind of a party. I started using um, meth and phetamines and um, which means you're up late and late so um, I just started hanging out with people who were using as well and um, so we're drinking during the day and, and using meth at night, basically. And we all were going to go to um, this guy's house who I had um, known since middle school. And we we're just going to watch a movie. And so we all went to his house. And then uh, some friends of mine were going to purchase some more drugs. So they left. And um, I stayed there alone. He decided that he wanted to have sex. And I said no. Um, he ultimately ended up raping me. And when it was over, my friends had came and um, they were, we were gonna be using drugs together, but instead, I obviously, I left. And since there was some, um, some physical issues, like I was choked and different things like that, I had to, I ended up in the hospital and where they performed a, a rape kit and um, the police were there, so they um, filed a report. Um, after I was raped, I, um, just tried to forget the whole thing and I used more drugs and drank a lot of alcohol and just tried to pretend like nothing happened. A few weeks after I got raped I started noticing some things about my body and I talked with my mom. I, um, she said you need to get a pregnancy test and I found out that I was pregnant. Um, and I was just really in denial too. I just couldn't, I was just shocked. I did stop using drugs at that point and just kind of sat in that but I did not I couldn't I couldn't believe it I just couldn't go there that I was given the suggestion to have an abortion and where I'm from you can anybody can have an abortion you just go down to the Planned Parenthood and have an abortion and it's legal and they won't even tell your parents if you're underage so what I kept hearing at that point was you need to have an abortion you need to have an abortion I mean look at your life you're nothing's happening good for you right now we're gonna bring a baby into this world too so People were um, encouraging me to go ahead and abort the baby. And even my Christian friends who um, basically went to church and they knew the word, they would, they, in their minds, they felt that God would understand because it, I was raped. Um, even my mom, she um, had asked me if I wanted to have an abortion because I was really depressed and I just didn't know really what I was going to do. And I, I couldn't, I could not have an abortion, even though the situation was rough, I knew that there was, that this is life, even at the moment of conception, and and I just, I knew that this life was growing inside of me. Whether I wanted to really accept it or not, I knew that that's really what was happening, and um, and this still was me, part of me, and, and this is my child, and um, God had given this child to me, and um, I just, I had such joy, like it was, like that was the decision. I was 10 days late and I um, finally gave birth to a nine pound, big, fat, beautiful little girl. I was so overwhelmed just with so, just so many feelings and thoughts and, and I not one time did I ever think of this terrible thing that happened. Like that, it didn't even play a part in any of it. and when you hold your child for the first, it's just, it's an, you can't explain how amazing it actually feels. That there's, there's just so much joy that you didn't even know was there in the first place and now there's more and then it's just, it's a, it's a, you can't explain it. There's always a, um, a plan of restoration. God always has a plan to restore you and that's why he sent, sent Jesus and Desiree, she's brought such joy to our family and, um, it's amazing to see God work through her and she has 
from day one, she's always been sensitive to the Holy Spirit and sensitive to what God wants. And she has a heart for for pleasing the Lord. My mom's decision was very brave and I think that she handled it very well. And how mature she was during that time was amazing. So she's pretty much my hero. My love for my family is just, I can't even describe it. It's, there's really no words that you can describe it. And I just love them so much. I just have this love for people that I can't even describe. Like. I love people so much that God just like gave that to me and I just, I love the Lord, I love my friends, my family. I couldn't ask for anything better. I would encourage somebody who has found themselves pregnant, whether it's something, a position they put themselves in or not, if it's something similar to mine, I would tell them to trust God and know that He, he is the creator of life. And no matter what, he children are a blessing, and I would say trust God and know that He's got a purpose and a plan. If you would like to share your abortion-related story, please contact us through our website, www.reallifetv.life, or through our Facebook page, Real Life CTN. If you need help in dealing with either an unplanned pregnancy or regret from a past abortion, please contact the H3 Helpline at 866-721-7881. Hi, I'm John Elefante and I'm here on location where the new video for this time was shot. It's a really special video. It's a story based on how my daughter came into this world and how her birth mother chose life. This is the actual location in the video when the birth mother has a dream sequence of her little girl possibly being three years old and having fun on this tire right here. And incidentally, a lot of pregnant women, they think that their son or daughter is not going to have a chance in this world. And that's not true. My wife and I are living proof that, you know, when a child is put up for adoption, there are many loving homes that this child can go to. And we are so blessed to say that we are a couple that, that had that opportunity. We, we have two adopted children, and it's, it's a fabulous alternative. When I wrote the song this time, I had the music written, and I didn't have any lyrics. And the lyrics came really easy to this song because it is based on the true story of how my daughter came into the world, which made the words just like fall out, which doesn't normally happen for me. And um, I knew at that time it was a really special song. And after James Joseph, the guy that mixed it, um, sent it back to me and I heard it mixed for the first time, I really knew it was a special song that had, it had the ability to save lives. And you know, when you, when you write a song like that, I'm not giving myself all the credit by any means, but when you write a song that special and you know it has the ability to, to do things that deep, I mean, it's, it's really awesome. You know, when we first decided to do a video to the song, speaking with Andrew Manzano, the director of the video, we both decided very quickly that I was not gonna be in the video, and that was by design, because the video is not about me. The video is the story, and I think that's what makes it so powerful. I think, you know, me entering the video with a guitar in my hand and singing the lyrics, Personally, for lack of a better word, I, th I think would have been kind of hokey. And like I said, it's really not about me. It's about the, it's about the story. And my prayer for the song is that you guys will just really watch it and, and, and get its full meaning, which I'm sure you will, and just share the heck out of it. Just send it to everybody you know, because you never know. You never know who it's going to affect. And I have a feeling it's going to affect a lot of people. And so definitely share it, and thanks for, thanks for being a part. She sat cold in a waiting room, frightened and all alone. Watched the clock tick down, knowing that her baby would soon be gone. Her head slung low, so embarrassed She was 13 years old She felt a kick inside as a reminder Of a life she couldn't show 
Then she heard a voice inside saying, run away. It was a mistake, but don't throw your child away. Then she fell into a light sleep, had a dream about a little girl. There was a birthday cake and three candles. She was living in another world. She saw the little girl become a woman, living in a happy home. Then she was suddenly awakened by a voice that called her name. They said, don't worry. She laid flat on the table. She asked, please, can I talk to someone? But a headstrong woman with a blank stare said, we've got to get this done. Then she cried out loud, please help me. I've got to get to a phone. I need to call my mama to help me find my baby a home. They said, don't worry. I'm Samuel Lafonte. The story you just watched is based on how I was rescued from being aborted. And we are eternally grateful that Sammy's birth mother chose life. Every day in America, 3,500 children lose their lives to abortion. That is one child every 25 seconds. You can save babies from abortion. For more information, please visit onlineforlife.org.
Thanks for joining us on Real Life. The stories that you've watched today are all real. Better still, the hope and the healing that's available for your life is also real. Please take a moment and contact the website information on the screen and be ready to take your next step of freedom right now. We'll see you next time on Real Life. If you would like to share your abortion-related story, please contact us through our website, www.reallifetv.life, or through our Facebook page, Real Life CTN. If you need help in dealing with either an unplanned pregnancy or regret from a past abortion, please contact the H3 Helpline at 866-721-7881. 